right at the beginning, we can start with our first square. We'll wall off two sides, put a wall frame here, and on this side, we'll use a raised triangle foundation with a half wall above it. Add the roof and seal with a double door. Our tool cupboard goes in this corner in this orientation. From this corner, we can grab two sleeping bags and a furnace. Our first bag goes against the double door and the back wall. Now make sure after you place it, you can still upgrade this foundation for later. Now if we rotate our second bag, we could place it right next to the first. From the opposite corner, we could place our furnace. Try to get this as close to the TC as you can. This will allow us to slip in a small box into this little gap. Once you have enough metal, you can grab your first large box and place it in front of the TC. Now none of these placements are permanent, but now, if we take a look, we have a nice little base to get you started. We'll expand this from the front with a square and two triangles. Raise two triangle foundations like this, and on this side we could full wall. Once the ceiling is on, we want to jump up here. Our first half wall goes here, but we want to enclose the other two like so. These foundations can be weak in an early wipe, so we really want to start securing them as early as possible. Now we'll start by adding an airlock to our new front entrance. Our actual doors will go here and here. That being known, we can enclose the rest with full walls. Remember to add your ceiling tiles and then we can add our two double doors. I like them to swing out for easier movement at this time. From the inside here, we'll want to finish our entrance on the bottom floor. Do this by stacking two half walls and demolishing the bottom one. The top one floats, gaining stability elsewhere. Now we have a fully sealable bunker, and from the outside, if I do say so myself, looks pretty darn cool for some reason. Now that we have a working bunker, I'd like to show you how this works in case this is a new concept to you. To seal the bunker, we'll add a half wall here with hard side facing us. We'll want to upgrade this to wood. We'll step back and add our first triangle. I'd like to upgrade this to armored, but sheet metal is fine. Our last triangle is special because it's the actual entry point a raider will see. This needs to be upgraded to whatever the rest of the bunker room is. In the end, this will be HQM, but for right now, it's stone. And it's sealed. To open the bunker as the base owner, you spawn on the sleeping bags inside this room. You can now walk through here and easily soft side pick this half wall with tools. This will also break both triangles, opening the bunker. Now this is not meant to be sealed every time you leave your base, it's really only for offline raid protection. Now I hope you were able to build everything up into this point without trouble, because we're going to build the same thing again, on this side. To give perspective on the orientation, our original starter base would be in this position. On this side though, we're going to skip the double door for now, and instead expand out in the same way we did before. The first two triangles are low, followed by the two high ones. Wall in this back side, and then we can build the same set of half walls. We want to get the first half wall on this part of the foundation. And remember, we want to enclose the other two. From the top here, we can add this floor, which will hold up our new airlock. Once again, we can wall off this section the same way we did earlier. Once our ceiling goes on, we can add the same two double doors to the frames. Remember to make sure both of these doors swing outward just to make moving around here easier. To finish, the bottom floor requires the same half wall floating in the top half position. Whoa, deja vu. In case you were wondering, yes, this is technically two separate bases at the moment. There will be paths connecting them both soon enough. To be honest, you could split your team in half and build these both up at the same time. Unfortunately, I'm only one person and I just can't do that. It may be a bit premature right now, but I'd like to show you the final layout of the non-TC bunker. So if we come on in, the first thing we'll do is place our level 3. For me, the hitbox feels better if I rotate, place, and rotate back. Next, we'll place a temporary half wall on this side and grab ourselves a sleeping bag. We want this to be all the way in this corner, and the half wall allows optimum placement while still being able to seal the bunker later. For our loot room, we'll want to add a half height square and triangle like this. We can replace the buildup with the wall frame and upgrade it to sheet metal immediately. Place a garage door in the frame and now we can add two small boxes underneath the level 3 using the classic rotating trick. By the way, I love this small box skin, absolutely genius, my new favorite. For our boxes, first we'll grab two large ones. The first one goes all the way in the back with the second one right in front of it. Grab yourself two small boxes and a barbecue. We'll place the barbecue all the way in the back and put the small box under it. We can actually place a second small box facing the other way and still be able to access everything. 
Now we can grab two more barbecues and small boxes. For this part, make sure the barbecues are facing the same way as mine or they can be a real pain. Once again, we can optimize the space with boxes underneath them. Now the top part will be exactly the same but completely different. If we jump on up, our first two large boxes will go in the same place as the bottom. We'll grab another barbecue and two small boxes. This is also the same as the bottom part. Except, I just realized that I forgot to add the second box in front of it. So do that. Now we can grab our final two large boxes with the first one going in this spot. Our last one can go right onto this tip. You know what, actually it's better if I pick up this one and place the last one first. You want this one to be snug up against the level 3 and then put this one into place after. Grab the final barbecue and small box. They fit into this spot and even if you place the box the wrong way like I did, you can still fit through. As always, if you have any optimizations for this loot room in mind, please let me know about them in the comments below. At this time, you'll probably want to begin upgrading. Now this will be done at different paces for everyone, so in the video, I will upgrade everything into its final state. Now doing this will also allow you to see some of the reasons this base works how it does. So I'll start off by armoring the entire core. Most likely, this will be upgraded into sheet metal before even thinking about HQM. When building a bunker, it's important to count the high foundations as the boundary to the sealed room, since raiding them does get you into the bunker after all. With jackhammers given raiders the ability to soft side high foundations, it's important to cover the tops of each of them. This is where the half walls come into play. Upgrading them to sheet metal and sealing the foundations below them denies raiders this opportunity. Now you can see the two raised foundations from up here. Once we cap them off, there is only this drop down gap in the entrance. The best way to travel up will be using ladders. Now note that you can still seal the bunker with the ladder in place. In this room, our entire ceiling should be upgraded to sheet metal. And if we come through this door, upgrade this final wall and the ceiling. Now if we come to the outside, you can see what's visible to the outside world and how those two foundations are no longer weak. We still have one left, which we will cover in the next section. Now bear with me, I know a base should never look like this, but it's a great way to show you where stuff is and how it works. I'll upgrade this wall from the outside. You can do it from the inside, but you will have to move a couple of boxes. Now if we come around to the other entrance and go inside, we're going to pretty much do the same thing. Starting in the back, we'll upgrade all three ceiling tiles, then this wall and the floor. Remember, all the foundations should be HQM along with this half wall. In our entrance room, first thing we could do is upgrade all the half walls to sheet metal. After that, we could secure this room the same way by adding half walls above the raised foundations and capping them off with sheet metal. The ceiling here will also be sheet metal, and if we jump into the hole, we could place the ladder. Now if I can climb back up, on our way out, we can upgrade these final two parts. Now each individual bunker is 15 rockets to raid, there's two of them, so that's 30 rockets to raid both, but not so fast. Soft siding the third foundation aside, there are still many places we could splash both bunkers with rockets, cutting the raid cost in half, which is bad. So to fix this, our goal will be to completely separate the two bunkers across their line of symmetry. Now what's really cool about this, is we can actually do it while connecting our two entrances and adding the final honeycomb all at the same time. Basically, the whole base is about to come together. We'll start with the bottom floor. If you come out of one of the entrances, we want to add two triangle foundations here with corresponding ceilings. With hard side facing us, we can place four full walls to complete the honeycomb. On this side, we want two more triangles and then we can wall it in. Put one roof and then jump up. Now we place the other roof and close it with this half wall. From up here, place another half wall and top it off as well. What we've just done is sealed off our last high foundation. On the ground again, we'll place a square, three triangles, and a square at the end. We can place the corresponding floor tiles above them. Now we want to place full walls. Now make sure the hard sides are all the same way as shown in the video. On the end, we can place two final walls and top it off. 
I know this looks weird, but this way you can kind of see how this honeycomb is sectioning off the two bunkers. Since this base is symmetrical, we can do the exact same pattern, but starting on the other entrance. We'll build the two triangles with the ceiling above and enclose it with full walls. Once again, on this side, we'll add two triangles and wall it in. After the ceiling, we can cover our last exposed high foundation. So far, so good. Now we can add the honeycomb around the side. If you notice, I'm actually adding this visible layer of honeycomb at the ground level. This is an effort to maybe conceal that this has raised foundations and that it's a bunker, but there are ways to tell. Once again, it's very important that all the hard sides face the same way as shown here. You don't want Raiders to be able to go through one wall and soft side the second one. If we pan around an aerial view, you can see that we are starting to beef up pretty quickly. Now we can add roof stacks to the top. For now, we use all sheet metal half walls and enclose the 2x2. Two two. We also want to have cross beams of sheet metal to stop the splash if they raid you top down. Now that would be a mistake, but it's a necessary precaution. With the 4 squares on top, you do want to upgrade these to HQM when you can. Now for those weird gaps. In front of them, we're going to place a square, two walls, and a slanted roof. This is going to be our entrance style. This can be modified if you prefer a different one. If we come up here, we can add this triangle, which you could put a turret on if you like. We'll place two triangles along with four full walls. This basically adds honeycomb to our bunker entrance. Starting at the front single door, we can add full walls around the entire border of the base. Once that's done, we can add a ceiling. This entire ceiling will be sheet metal to avoid splash in the final base, but stone can work for now. Seal this off with a stone half wall. If we jump through the gap, we can add a stone wall frame up here with a garage door for our elevator. Next, we're going to repeat all the stone work we just did on the other side. So, we're back at the weird gap. With this style of entrance, it is possible to place a twig floor above the slanty roof to open the sides to pickaxe, but it doesn't really get the raiders anywhere. Now if you really want to, you can actually upgrade it to sheet metal to make the job a little bit harder. We want to add in this honeycomb once again. This is for our second bunker's entrance. We can add a single door to this front and then build all the way back to the jack o' lantern door. Next we want to do the roof. Once again, sheet metal will be the final grade here. After this half wall is in, we can jump up and build our second elevator. Our base is looking hella beefy now, and the shell is nearly complete. To finish the shell, come out of the double door and into the gap. Up here, we'll use half walls around the entire edge and top it off with the ceiling. Now as soon as possible, upgrade all of this to sheet metal. In this room, we can add a half floor here and one on its diagonal. Place a full wall here and a half wall on the opposite one. What we've just built is our passageway between each of the symmetric sides of the base. If we come outside to the roof, we'll want to add a door frame above the bottom one. Remember to do the same thing on the other side. We can add two full walls and a triangle. Above that, use two half walls and a triangle to get a sneaky spot for a trap. This garage door is our final roof access point and we can build the same thing on the opposite side. You could put shotgun traps or even turrets in these spots to stop people from stealing your helis. If we come in here, there's some final touches that we can do with our roof complete. Come to this half wall, upgrade it to sheet metal, and rotate it. We'll do the same thing on this side. On our second floor, we'll want to break both sheet metal doors. While we're here, we can add six furnaces on top of these two triangles. Three go on each side. Might as well make good use of this space. Now this floor layout is symmetric as well, so that would be a total of 12 small furnaces, which may be overkill. You can leave these out or put some boxes there instead. Once you're done, you'll want to grab yourself two garage doors, the first one facing this way and the second one this way. 
With the half wall, we could then turn these two triangles into a loot room. I usually put four boxes in these. Keep in mind these boxes are not very secure, but they do make for a good spot for some extra loot. I actually don't know the layout of a better two triangle loot room. If you happen to know one, let me know about it in the comments below. Once the loot room is done, we can add in a wall frame. As a matter of fact, we'll add in a bunch of wall frames because you guessed it, it's garage door time, my favorite time of the day. There's six through each path, which is necessary. When you start talking about raiders having to go through sheet metal walls and armored bunkers, door paths become much more appealing. This will fix that. Now you can obviously mod this to fit your playstyle, but one idea I have for this square is to add two beds. Since there will be two more on the other side, you will have multiple places and sides to spawn inside the base, which is always good. I also like the idea of putting a locker here. To finish off this hall, we can start at the front and upgrade all the ceiling tiles to sheet metal. After adding all these garage doors in, we don't want Raiders to be able to splash the roof. Now since this base has all things built twice, I figured instead of wasting your time by showing you how to build the same thing again, I'd just do it off camera. But it's exactly the same. Kinda spooky actually. I don't know which side I'm on. One of the non-symmetric additions we can add is right here. You could put a loot room here with a couple of large boxes on bottom and on top. These boxes are closest to the roof. Now they're not very secure, but they do make for a good spot for quick dropping monument loot and things that involve a heli. When this room is done, make sure to add a garage door to the front. On this side, we have the same thing, but a little bit different. In this case, adding a garage door actually cuts the path in half, which is really good. As far as putting the loot room here, that would work fine. The top two boxes can go in their normal spots, but when you get to the bottom, you want to do something like this to avoid blocking people's paths. Now all the upper floors are done, along with our roof, and from the outside, we are looking pretty good. To finish this base, we'll have to travel all the way back to the very beginning, our TC bunker. Well, the first thing we'll do is break the sheet metal double door. We're going to pretty much move everything in this room now, except for the TC. Upgrade this frame to sheet metal, and then we can place the garage door. The most optimal way to configure this room is actually with vending machines. The first one will go here and it fits very snug against the HQM foundation. When working with vending machines, remember to disable the broadcast or it will appear as an empty shop on the map. The second vending machine goes on this back wall here. Our final one goes on this side, and what I really like about vending machines is how close you can actually put them on things. It's basically in the TC. Now before we place our two sleeping bags, we can build this half height triangle right here. Our first bag goes here, and the second one should fit right next to it. Right there. Now we can start placing our large boxes. We're going to actually be able to get five of them in here. The first one goes long ways in this corner. With the second box, we'll kind of make an L shape. Make sure it's as far right as possible. If you place them both good enough, you will be able to get the small box right into this small gap. Before we go any further, place a twig half wall here to use as a guide. We're going to add in the barbecue and small box combo here. We want it to be up against the back wall, but as long as the twig is there, you won't block the bunker seal. We can even get an extra small box here. Now we can finish this room by grabbing our last three large boxes. The first one goes all the way in this corner. It is important to get this one as far in the corner as possible. So take your time with this and place it perfectly. You can use the line on the stone triangle as a guide to parallel. The second one should fit right into here nice and easy. If we come over and break this, our third box is going to stick out a bunch. 
I like to put a small box on the floor here for a second because when you're standing on something, it's very, very easy to place. That is the TC room done. Just double check if you could still seal the bunker. You should be able to. And that is pretty much the base. Well, actually, I forgot something. If you're looking at the front doors, come around to the side here and add a sheet metal triangle honeycomb here and the same thing on the other side. This is very important to do. Sorry that I forgot it. Okay, now, where was I? And that is pretty much the base. Sorry for the lack of cool effects in this video. I fell a bit behind schedule with the production and with the fresh wipe in just a few hours. I really wanted to demonstrate this base is art for you in time so that it can keep your loot safe. Well, apparently it's 8 o'clock a.m. now, so good night or good morning. I don't even know anymore.